<laughs> hey guys, it's Kelly, and today, so excited to bring you a highly requested tour, and that is a 2021 Lincoln Navigator. The Navigator got a body style change in 2019, and since then, this car has been making waves, competing with some really exciting luxury cars, the main one being the Cadillac Escalade. And in fact, I've heard a lot of people prefer the Navigator over the Escalade. So today, we are going to do a deep dive into it, put my car seats in it, put my stroller in it, and I'll take you through the entire car. Before we get started though, my name is Kelly and I'm the Car Mom. I review cars for moms and for families. If this is your first time joining me, make sure you subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then comment below about what other car tours you want to see. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the exterior, the front end. Very updated and honestly, I really, really like it. We've got some great headlights right here. Everything's fully LED, daytime running lamps here and here. We move into this like really beautiful front end grill. This is completely chromed out. We've got the huge Lincoln logo and then look at all like the little baby Lincoln logos next to it. Isn't that so stinking cute? Love it. Okay, let's move along to our side profile. To start, we've got some beautiful two-toned wheels. Our navigator badging right here looks amazing. We've got some chrome around the windows and then chrome roof rails. Not obsessed with these chrome roof rails. Just like kind of outdates the body style in my opinion a little bit. When we open up our door, we've got automatic running boards. We love to see that because this car's freaking huge, y'all. I'm six feet tall. So like, you little 5'2", little teeny boppers, good for you, but you're gonna need these running boards. So, moving along to the back end, we are doing the L today, which is the extended version of the Navigator. We start with the wraparound tail lights, and then guys, I don't love the back end. I just think, ugh, I don't like this. I don't know why this makes the car look so much older than it is. There's just, it's too, it's just not for me. I don't like this giant red bar. I don't. I just don't think I like the taillights, honestly. I'm okay with the Lincoln badging spaced out. You know, kind of wish we would have tucked this wiper underneath here, but this is an eyesore. Freaking eyesore, but let's get in the inside. Okay, a lot to break down in here. This is a, a luxury high-end car. This one has an MSRP of $93,000. That, my friends, is an expensive car. That, my friends, is a house in some markets. Not today's real estate market, but you get the point. It's an expensive car. Let's start with the door panel. Again, a lot to break down here. First of all, the seats in this car are absolute insanity. So many ways to adjust it. Like, thank goodness it has memory seats because guarantee you'll never get your seat in the same position twice. It is like a 20-way power seat. It's, it's, the seats are super comfortable, super customizable, tons of nice lumbar support. So especially if you're someone who like has back problems or just like doesn't like sitting in a car, these seats are awesome. We also have massaging seats. It's amazing. We had them on on the drive over here. They, it's subtle, but it's so enjoyable. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Then we move over to all of these different compartments. We're super excited about them. Unfortunately, I only brought the world's most obnoxious water bottle today, so this is a little difficult to like show you what fits. See, that's not even a fair comparison. But we have two cup holders down here, a little section right there, and then still a nice size door panel. So a lot of great storage on our door. Let's get you to the other side and we will talk about some more of the features. Okay, so here's a shot of me in the driver's seat of this Lincoln Navigator. Living large is the only way I can describe it. Let's look at these seats for a second. They're like gamer chairs. So, so comfortable. So many different ways you can move it like I mean, it's just like doing doing the most. Just super comfortable. We're very excited about it. Okay, and then let's talk about all of these bells and whistles because this car has everything. At $93,000, it's exactly what I would expect. Steering wheel, absolutely beautiful. We've got some really nice wood just like sprinkled throughout the whole car. It's not too much. It's very luxurious without reading, you know, old lady. I really like it. The displays in here are a little eh for me because if I'm comparing to something like the Cadillac Escalade. If you watch my previous tour, the whole dash is a freaking screen. Everything is tying nicely in together. This is like they took it, put an iPad here and an iPad mini here and like they're totally separate. So I kind of wish there was a little bit more cohesion between the two, but 
they didn't ask me. So starting with our steering wheel controls, a lot of nice bells and whistles. We've got the automated cruise control. We've got some really beautiful chrome detailing, like even on like the buttons, it's kind of like a engraved chrome. It looks great. A completely digital display, heads up display, amazing. If you guys don't know what heads up display is, it's basically displaying information on the steering wheel. So you can't see it, but I can see it. So I can see the time, the temperature, how fast I'm going, what gear I'm in, how many miles till empty. You can edit that as needed if it's too much, but I love that because I'm able to see like my key things that I need to know without taking my eyes off the road. So that's awesome. Um, we move into this display. We've got our stop start button up here, completely in Chrome and then some really pretty, I mean, it's beautiful. I love the Chrome with the high gloss black, the screen and the infotainment system, very user friendly. It's a complete touch screen. It's very responsive. I like the infotainment system. We've got some really great quick buttons as well. So I like the things that they've pulled out of the screens. First off, I love how easy it is to find this, which is our camera. So I can see my surround view and my backup camera just by the touch of a button. I think that's great, especially if you're like, parking this giant bus and you're like, hey, am I in the freaking lines? Let me double check. You can just simply hit that button without having to put it in gear. We come down here to our piano key gear, gear selector, would take some getting used to, but it's honestly saving so much space. And with that save space, I get some awesome cubby spaces in this car. I'll show you in a second. Moving on to our climate control, we've got heated seats and ventilated seats in this car. We've got this beautiful like just command center of just everything I'm looking for. Before we get to here, look on, take a look underneath here. You know what we call this? This is one of those old purse collectors. Throw this there, throw that there, throw your wallet there, throw anything you need to there. I love how this is disconnected. I think that is so sassy. If we open up this one, we've got a wireless charger, a USB and a USB-C. We've got a little change collector slash phone holder. It fits your phone great, so that's awesome. Two cup holders. And then the mother load, quite honestly, completely swallows my elbow. <laughs> completely. We love that as well as another little change collector. So everything up here is large and in charge. And I am happy about it, to be honest with you. Um, we've got moving up here, the mirror, huge, large, fabulous. We love it. This is fun. This is like a little, I call this the are you behaving mirror. So you can pull this out so you can see your kids in the back seat. It's kind of dinky though. I was kind of hoping it would have the, um, the rear view camera right here. Maybe on the higher trim levels you do. Stay tuned until the end though, because I'm actually going to be building my own Lincoln Navigator and I'll talk you through different trim levels then. Great panoramic sunroof. There's a lot to love up here. Um, but what nothing gets me more excited than a good car seat setup. So that's what we're going to talk about next. So I'm trying to drink more water. So I understand I'm being dramatic with this 40 ounce cup from Reduce. I love this thing though, but it fits. It doesn't like go all the way down. The cup holders could be larger, but like I'm not going to knock them on the cup holders because I'm clearly the problem in this situation. Okay, back seat. Okay guys, here I am in the second row of the Lincoln Navigator. Before I put car seats in, I just want to show you the kind of space that we're working with. So I'm pretty tall, about six feet. Great clearance. This seat set for myself amazing near clear clearance. Here's something I love the back of this seat. It's like a little bit easier of a material to clean. So like if you have forward facing kids that are going to be putting their feet against it, that's kind of nice. We've got ceiling vents right here. We've got nothing really too noteworthy on the door. I mean, there's like one little cubby right here, but it's not very deep. As far as the comfort of my seats is concerned, it's kind of a firmer seat. If you guys don't know, Ford owns Lincoln. So this navigator is on the same platform as the Expedition. I love the Expedition. These are Expedition seats, which I like, and I'll show you that in a second, but the seats are very firm. Moving on to my climate control right here. We've got our own climate control. We've got heated seats, which is awesome. A outlet, a USB, a USB-C, a 12 volt cup holders. Lots of fun stuff. I don't, I wish the cup holders were here on the back of the center console because that is annoying. And then like imagine the person sitting here. So not obsessed with that, quite honestly. No cup holders there either. Okay. Does come in a bench and captain's chairs. I was so excited because they actually had a bench seat. I like showing a bench when I can because I think it shows you guys more flexibility for car seat setup. So what I'm gonna do now is put two car seats on either side and then see if I can fit in the middle. Okay, good news. The car seat setup, as I was expecting, is amazing in this car. Again, same platform as the Ford Expedition, which is fabulous. Lincoln Navigator, also fabulous. Here's the breakdown. When we're doing the bench seat, we now have an eight passenger car. So in this eight passenger car, 
Every seat in the second and third row has its own tether anchor, giving you a ton of flexibility for forward-facing car seats. If you don't know, you need to have a tether anchor for any forward-facing car seat. As far as lower anchors are concerned, five sets, five, three sets across this bench, two in the back. So a ton of car seat flexibility. This is where these cars, the Navigator and the Expedition are better than the GM products because the Cadillac, the Tahoe, the Yukon, the Suburban do not put lower anchors in their third row. So car seat setup, 100% fabulous. And would you even believe that it gets better? Let me show you. So when we have a car install, when we have a car seat install with the lower anchors, this car comes with what's called a car seat friendly tilt, meaning you can access the third row with a car seat installed. So I'm gonna show you, you obviously wouldn't do it with this pumpkin base in here, but if you had your pumpkin seat here and you needed to get kids into the third row, you pull this lever up here, it completely tilts the whole seat. This does not infect the integrity of the installation. So then when this is popped open, you can get into the back seat. Freaking amazing. You know who can't do this? The Escalade. So point to the navigator. Okay, here I am, guys, in the middle seat of the second row with a car seat on either side. I've got an Upper Bay Mesa right here, a Gray Coat Extended Fit right here, and Mama Kel can still sit in the middle. Love this. Freaking love this. Another thing I love about this car, middle head restraints in both this row and that row. I'm not trying to harp on, but guess who doesn't have middle head restraints? If you guess GM, you're right. They do not put middle head restraints in. So, what a middle head restraint does, if I'm riding back here, which I would want to ride back here with my kids, in between them. If we get in a collision and I don't have a head restraint, that increases my chances for whiplash and it can be a lot more dangerous of a position in the car. So I like that we have middle head restraints in both seats, okay? 10 out of 10. I'm super comfortable right here. Another thing that I really like is that all these seats are on their own track. So like I can move up one seat. So like if I, you know, depending on your situation, on your car seat's flexibility, if you wanted to give this child a little bit more room in the third row, well, I can't do it from this angle, but you could move this seat up but then not these seats. So just a ton of good flexibility. I am just, I knew I was gonna be impressed, but like this is just a luxury car for car seats. I don't sit, I don't think it could get better than the Lincoln Navigator, honestly. Okay, before I open to the third row, I just wanna give a quick disclaimer. Make sure if you have complicated car seat situations, you consult a CPSD and you do a personalized consultation. Okay, let's hop into this third row, shall we? This looks a little tight. Okay, nice. In the third row, pleasantly surprised. We have three seats across the bench, but it's a wide bench. Like I really feel like as a full-size adult, I could sit comfortably in either position. We have this seat move slightly up, so I could still even fit my pumpkin seat in this seat with the driver's seat set for myself. So stick with me here. Driver's seat set for a six foot tall person. Infant car seat here, still plenty of leg room. So like this is working. It's 100% working back here. We've got ceiling vents, which is awesome. A light back here, our own USBs and cup holders. Okay, and I can control my recline back here, which is kind of exciting. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's lots of love about the Lincoln Navigator. Let's check that trunk out. Trunk, took us forever to figure out how to open. It's not here, it's not there, it's not this. It's all the way over here. It's a little button. It just took us a second. Kind of embarrassing. Okay, and then here's our trunk space. So what are we, well, this is an Upper Baby Cruise stroller. Fits great, plenty of room for groceries still. Great compartments on the side. There's like these like little troughs. Don't know what I'd put in them, but I like the option to put something in them. A nice little cubby here. Take the stroller out. Ooh, can't part. Take the stroller out. And we'll check underneath here. A nice other little compartment to house some things. And then what I love is that you can put down the seats all power from right back here. A little slow. So then check out that cargo space, y'all. We've got car seats in the second row, so we won't worry about it. But I mean, this is basically a truck bed right here. This is basically a freaking truck bed. Should I hop in? Of course I should. It's nice. Moving in. So we're just cruising around in the old Navigator. So what I like about this car is it's a six cylinder. So unlike some of the other bear cars that are V8s, this one's a six cylinder, which means you get a little better gas mileage. The window sticker says 16 on the city, 20 on the highway. I feel like that's a little generous, but I mean, it's a huge freaking car. So gas mileage is what gas mileage is. As far as the drive is concerned though, it's very zippy. And 
the car feels large and I'm not going to tell you I feel like I'm like zipping around town in it but it's got great 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 acceleration and handling it really does it handles so nicely on the road the suspension is tight the acceleration is great the braking is awesome I love how this car drives for a big car all these big luxury cars drive great I mean the Escalade drives great the Navigator drives great so we love that um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Not gonna look at the camera because safety first, but comment below which car I should tour next and then check out all of my other tours. I've done like over 50 car tours already. So if you're wondering if I've done it, search my page because there's a good chance I have. We're starting to run out of like the mom cars, So we're definitely gonna start dabbling into like the truck and sedans just to like see, because people put car seats in those too. And because we're just curious and not everyone who watches me has kids anyway. So we want to bring all of the good information. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Okay guys, let's build my very own 2021 Lincoln Navigator. Okay, first things first, we want the long wheelbase. Look what that does to the price. I guess that's, I think I think I do though. Okay, let's hit this. I'm not gonna go for the black label because I just cannot do 100 grand for a Lincoln. Just like cannot mentally do that. And I think you still get a lot of great, great, great features. Now, the next problem is if I'm already in the reserve. So here's what's included, a lot of great stuff. I still get like the deployable running boards. I get the 360 degree camera. I get the 22 inch wheels, all the stuff. But like I want heads up display and for only 1200 bucks to get the 24 perfect position seats. I just think I want that. But then I'm like, what's down here? Okay, well now some more stuff. Um, No, need four by four. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be expensive. <coughs> okay, it's okay, let's keep going. It's, it's what it costs, I guess. What? I think I'm not going to like this blue. I don't think it's going to be right. Wow, it's also taking forever to load. This green is really interesting to me. Let's see if the green will load. Oh my gosh, absolutely not. That looks horrible. The navy. See, look at this. is a six ninety five. Oh, that's darling. Wow, I love that. Love that. Hold on, let me keep going. The white looks good. I think this gray looks nice. I think I'm gonna go with the gray because I think it like looks good like with the two tone. This blue is not quite right. And I also sometimes when I get to like a super luxury car, I don't always like my blue color that I normally go for. So I think I'm gonna go with that. Interior, my different leather options. The light has the. That's not bad, honestly. That looks pretty good. Am I gonna go for that? see here's what I like about it see these floor mats they're still black it's kind of a lot of beige right here but it looks like it's all leather so it's super easy to clean I think I'm gonna go with that what is this oh oh that looks nice too oh sorry phone dropped wow I'm having so much fun right here let's look at this one I don't like that that looks cheap I'm gonna go for the cappuccino who am I today okay that's it oh second row seats I can get a bench in the higher trims. I can get a bench in the higher trims, people. That's what I want. That's what I want. I think a oh, rear entertainment for two grand. Well, I'm not going to get it, but you know the options there. Okay. That brings my Lincoln Navigator to an MSRP of 91.6. Excited about it. Do I need all these features? No, but I also feel like when I'm going to get to this sassy of a car anyway, I want all the things.